-hmm. Good evening and welcome to tonight's council meeting. Before we start our council meeting, I'd ask uh, Madam City Clerk Richards to read our quotation of the week. Thank you, Mayor. To accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And one brief announcement. Today is the last, is the last meeting of the old council, and tomorrow is the first meeting of the new council, and that will also be televised uh, for the public. It's also when, uh, during the first council meeting of the new council, the new alderman gets sworn in. Call the 26th regular meeting of the common council of order. Mm -hmm. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. D. Berg? Here. E. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Excuse? Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Van Akron Here. and Vanderweel. 15 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Ratke, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Approval of the minutes, President Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous town council meeting and the same standard approval was entered up with, on the record. Later. Motion to second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there's a card to the mayor from Arnold J. Martin uh, advising that uh, he's enjoyed his many years on the Commission on Aging, but due to his medical condition, he uh, is resigning from the Commission. Ask for a motion to accept. Move. Motion and second to accept. All those in favor, state aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Resignation accepted. And there's a letter to the mayor from Scott Lewandowski advising the mayor that uh, he must resign his uh, term as member of the committee, uh, Commission on Aging, uh, even though his term is due to expire in April 2009 on the basis that uh, he hasn't been able to make a lot of the meetings. Ask for a motion to accept. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, resignation accepted. And then finally, there's a letter from uh, Susan Hunley advising the mayor that uh, she would not uh, apply for another appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee and her last meeting would be April 6th of 2006. Also a motion to accept. Right All those in favor state aye. <coughs> Any opposed? Motion carries, resignation accepted. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, first on the list would be Jason Borden. Jason, are you here? Yes. If you could just come up to the front here. <clears throat> and could you give me your home address, Jason? 308 Park Avenue. Park Avenue. It's 53081. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Hi. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. My name is Jason Borden. I'm a veteran, I'm a soldier, and I'm also an American. And um, I want to bring before you something that I'm asking uh, for your help. Um, I want to start by going back and telling you a story about 1991 when I returned from Desert Storm. Um, we were the first unit that was activated and deployed to Iraq, or excuse me, Saudi Arabia back when uh, the war started, Desert Storm. and. Uh, we didn't get any send-off or any recognition or anything when we left because we were activated and deployed so rapidly. However, after 366 days, I got on a plane. I flew back, didn't know what to expect. We landed in Bangor, Maine. And as I got off the plane, I had no idea that there was anything even left because uh, most of the soldiers that had came and gone to the uh, deployment area behind after me had already left and come home. So we expected just to get off the plane and go about our business to our next air base. However, there was one thing that stuck out in my mind. I got off the, off the plane and I saw this huge American flag 
draped over the top of this, this airport and all these people out there cheering and waving flags. And as I continued to march in with my unit, we walked into this, this airport and there were all these people with VFW hats and American Legion hats and they were shaking my hand and telling me thank you. And I couldn't understand why they would tell me thank you. You know, I mean, here I am, I'm just a, a truck driver that was over there, you know, to support my brothers and sisters in, in uniform for what they had to do. And I didn't really realize how significant that would be, and, but it affected me for, throughout all my life since then. Ever since then, every time there's been something to do with the military or, or any of the soldiers that are deploying or coming home, I felt it's my obligation because the amount of joy that, the, that these people showed me in Bangor, Maine, it was so important to me. And uh, while I was over there, you know, I didn't think a lot of what was going on back here in America, except for once in a while I would get a letter from home or I'd get somebody to send me a, a newspaper that had somebody displaying the American flag or a yellow ribbon. That was one of the things that kept me going. We saw some pretty hard times. We, you know, we thought a few times that we were hit with chemicals. Uh, we traveled up to Kuwait City, which was, you know, a pretty bad area through smoke that was so black that made day look to night. And, you know, it makes you sit over there and wonder, well, is all this worth it? Is all this what we're supposed to be doing? Well, the politics of the matter, you know, why we're there, really didn't concern me as much as, as my fellow brothers and sisters in uniform because we understood why we were there was to protect the people beside us. And because we believe in freedoms and liberties so much that we'd be willing to sacrifice and give it up for as long as we have to so other people will be ensured to have it. Now, um, I was given the opportunity to do a welcome home for the 330th military police. I don't remember, uh, I don't know if a lot of you remember it, but we decorated uh, downtown A Street. We had a wonderful ceremony, and one of the reasons behind that was uh, one of the soldiers had came home temporarily for a short leave in July. And uh, she was with uh, Mr. Kaiser when he was killed over there in, in action. And uh, the family wanted me to say a couple words to the family, and I got up there and I said the normal thing about how I thought she was a hero. And, you know, she wouldn't even look the crowd in the eye. She just sort of had, held her head down a little bit low, and, and she goes, you know, I hear you calling me a hero, but I don't think I'm a hero. The people are the heroes are the ones that didn't come home with me. That's why it was important for me to go out there and show these people that they were wrong, that they are heroes. And Sheboygan came together in, in a fashion that I just, I could not believe. And it was absolutely amazing. The tears on the, on the people's faces as they got off of their tears of joy for being back home and this reception that they got was absolutely wonderful. Well, now we've got another situation. Bravo Battery out of uh, Plymouth, uh, the 121st Artillery Unit has been activated and will be deployed over there with 182 members. <laughs> And I have had quite a bit of time to speak to quite a few of these soldiers. In fact, I'm, I'm close personal friends with a couple of them. And, you know, it, it seems to me like the common theme that I get from a lot of these soldiers is like, well, we're going there because, you know, people are dying and we would like to at least be there with our brothers and sisters who are risking their lives. It's not about the politics of war, but it's the fact that there are American soldiers dying and they're willing to risk their life to try to help that out. It's like if your family's under attack, regardless of what the reasons are, what do you do? You stand beside them. So I ask you, you know, these soldiers are out there thinking that nobody really thinks about the war. They spend a lot of time going out and, and reflecting <laughs> on what's happening. And that these soldiers are deploying, they think that a lot of people aren't even noticing that the word's not getting out there. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, I'm going to do everything within my power to try to prove them wrong. That we all here in Sheboygan, we are very patriotic and we love each and every one of those soldiers. And we want to do what we can to give them a good send-off. Now, I've... I've Volunteer to help out with organizing the send-off. You may have noticed the yellow ribbons all the way down from uh, 14th Street to the Armory. I've, I've done that with a few of my volunteers. But what I'm asking for, you, for now is for the City Council to approve. On the 21st is the day that they're going to be having their send-off ceremony, and they would like to have it at the Armory. Now, I have spoke with the people at the Armory, and there's a almost $800 bill for the Armory. Jason? Would you like an additional minute? Your five minutes are up, but you may have an additional minute. Yes, I'm sorry. No, that's quite all right. I'll, I'll try to go quicker. I'll lose no, track of time. Um, <laughs> and the Army, uh, on the 21st, they would like to have it. And I'm sure if, if I sold a few things and tried to raise money, I could come up with it. However, these are American heroes. They're leaving the country for how knows, I mean, who knows how long. They may not even come back. So I'm asking you, as uh, members of Sheboygan and the Common Council, that you could see clear to maybe give us approval to have the Army without cost for the 21st for the send-off for these great American heroes. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jason. <coughs> Next on the list is Terry Van Akron. <coughs> Terry, can you give me your home address, please? 1719 North 13th Street. And you will have five minutes. 
four. I'll get six if I want one and more. And you get six if you want. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor, Common Council, and guests. It's great to be here again, see so many good friends and uh, faces that I've worked with in the past. Tonight, I'm here for a couple reasons. First of all, I'm asking you not to change the city clerk's position to an appointed position. Uh, it's one of the things that the people enjoy voting for, and uh, we have enough trouble getting people to get out to the poll, so I ask you to not uh, change that, or if you're going to consider that change, uh, why don't you send it to a referendum first and ask the people if they'd be willing to give up that vote because it is their vote, so at least do that. Second all, of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, the new, ele newly elected alderman, Jim Bourne, who I see is here tonight. Congratulations, Jim. Bob Ryan, Gene Kleinus, is that correct? Kleinus. Kleinus. And uh, of course, my good friend Mark Hanna and his wife Debbie who are here tonight. Congratulations to you all, you all and uh, good luck in the upcoming year. Um, it's going to be a tough job, but I'm, I'm sure you all appreciate it, and thank you for running. I'd like to also congratulate the returning alderman, Richard Manning, who's not here tonight, Gene Kittleson, Bonnie Serta, congratulations, Bonnie and, and Jean, uh, Silas Vanderwilly, congratulations, Silas. Silas is from my district, and I served with Silas. Congratulations, Silas. <coughs> I'd also take, like to take a few minutes tonight to thank the four aldermen who, are, who this is their last meeting tonight and thank them for their service for the city of Sheboygan. Marge Sagali, thank you, Marge. Thank you for all your hard work, work and your commitment to Sheboygan. I'm sure you'll still be involved in the city politics. Dan Berg, Dan, I've known you and Pat for a long time. Uh, congratulations and thank you for your hard work and I'm looking forward to continue working with you in our Monday morning breakfast with the county. Bill Steffen, Bill, Bill, Bill and I have been friends for a long time, many years. <coughs> probably longer than both of us want to admit. Um, we served together on the county board. We served together here on the Common Council. Bill, your knowledge and your common sense will be very missed. You've represented the people of the 7th District well, and I know you will continue to be involved, if nothing else, in my campaigns um, <laughs> in politics in this area. Thank you for your years of service on both the county board and the city council, and thank you for being a good friend. Last but not least, He's hiding behind flowers. <laughs> Last but not least, Alderman Van Akron, my father, Don Van Akron. Alderman Van Akron represented the second district for the last 19 years. He was elected in 1987. You know, many people don't realize it, but I was actually elected before my father. Most people think since he's been here so long that he talked me into running. But actually, I can remember my first year when I was an alderman. I can remember going down to my dad's house and many times he'd be going, why did you vote that way or what did you do that for? And I said, you know what, why don't you run? <laughs> and we, here we are 19 years later. Um, my father's always, my father and I always didn't agree when we served together and many times we voted on different sides of many issues. We served together on many councils for many years. Um, it made for an interesting roll call when they used to have to call D Van Akron and T Van Akron. My father isn't the type of alderman who got up and spoke every time just because he wanted to hear himself speak, but I know that he was one of the most conscientious and hardworking aldermen behind the scenes. He returned all the phone calls that he got as soon as possible and spent many hours meeting with his constituents. My mother reminded me the other day of a time one night, uh, it was around midnight, she said, where my dad received the call in the evening, and uh, city dump trucks were dumping snow. Yeah, Tom, at midnight, they were dumping snow <laughs> in the uh, neighborhoods, and the clanging of the, of the back of the truck was making a lot of noise. So the neighbors called my father. My father got up, got dressed, went down to where they were dumping the snow. Again, it was 12 o'clock at night. By this time, the person who had called had blocked the entrance to the snow and had the trucks blocked in, the police were there. Um, <laughs> My dad was able to talk to both sides, kind of calm things down, was able, before somebody got arrested, uh, was able to work with public works so that they wouldn't be dumping in the neighborhoods at midnight from that type. So those are the type of things that many of you aldermen have to face, not just these meetings, but those type of constituents calls. And uh, you spend many hours, it wasn't unusual to see my father after many hours of, of being here at meetings to then spend hours working with constituents on their needs or some of their problems. 
Alderman Van Akron, you've represented the people of the second district very well over the last 19 years. You've always stood up for what you've believed in. You voted what you believed were in the best interest of the taxpayers of Sheboygan. The citizens of Sheboygan, thank you for your years of service. Now as a spokesman for our family, Dad, we're very proud of you and all the work you've done. You've been a great example to all of us and we love you very much. Thank you, Dad. Next on the list is Dave Cookook. Dave, can you give me your home address, please? W6355, Judy Drive. In Say it again. W6355, Judy Drive. Judy Drive? Right. <coughs> and you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm hoping that I'm the bearer of good news for you tonight. Um, I was asked to come and give you a little update on what's going on uh, at Maywood. Uh, some of you might not know me. I'm David Cookook. I'm the uh, Environmental Park Director for the City of Sheboygan, which means that I'm stationed out at Maywood. And we've got a lot of things going on there right now, one of which is a major construction project. We're adding 5,600 square feet to our current ecology center. And I'm really proud of the fact that this is such a community issue and a community event. Uh, we have our friends group, the Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association, that has raised the $1.254 million to pay for that facility. And in addition to that, they've also raised a $250,000 endowment. That money will be utilized, the interest from that money will be used to offset the cost of utilities and uh, basic maintenance of the building. So I'm really happy about that. We also have volunteers coming out every Saturday morning to work with me to uh, offset the cost of this building too by helping me with some of the demolition and some of the, uh, the cleanup uh, to save expenses to the contractors. So that's been a great thing. One of the things about this project that has concerned me from the very beginning, seeing that the building is sitting right on the edge of a bluff uh, overlooking the Pigeon River, is the stormwater uh, that we're gonna have, the management of that stormwater from the, all the buildings or roof surfaces. And so to, to help with that, we've had Joe Majuris from Landmark Landscapes help to design, and he's volunteered his time, to put together a master landscape plan for the building. One of the things that he's incorporating in there is to handle all that stormwater that's coming off the roof surfaces by having it go into a rain garden. So this will be a great feature, uh, not only for Maywood, but also as an example to the city and, and to residents as to what they can do too with their stormwater so they're not dumping all of the stormwater down into the, into the storm sewers so that we have to process it at Dale's facility down at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, we also have a lot of cooperative ventures that are going on right now at Maywood too. We're trying to work hand in hand with a lot of other agencies. And as an example, this coming Saturday, which is Earth Day, if I have to remind you about that, April 22nd, um, we're gonna be working with the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership in order to do a litter cleanup of three sites along the Sheboygan River and also along the Pigeon River at Maywood. And so we're inviting volunteers to come out at nine o'clock on Saturday morning to help us with this first annual litter pickup along the Sheboygan River. We're also working this, with this very same group, the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership, to put on Sheboygan River forums throughout this, this upcoming year. We've put on two already, and these forums are all related to the Sheboygan, Sheboygan River remediation that's going to be taking place this coming summer. That should be a fascinating project as they um, dredge the, the Sheboygan River from, Kohler, or from Sheboygan Falls to Kohler to help get rid of the uh, PCB contamination in the sediment. We're also working with Thrivent Financial for Lutherans, and they are helping us this uh, coming May 6th on a day that they call Join Hands Day. And what that day is, it's a day when we invite volunteers to come on out and help with some sort of community service project. This year, the community service project happens to be at Maywood, and we'll be planting an additional 400 trees. Uh, that's in addition to the over 10,000 that I've planted since, or we've planted since I've been there uh, 17 years. So we have 400 more trees that are going in and uh, volunteers are invited to come out uh, beginning at nine o'clock in the morning and staying all day. Thrivent Financial is both paying for the trees as well as lunch for anybody that helps us plant them. We're also working with UW Extension 
the DNR, Woodland Dunes Nature Center in Manitowoc, and Brilliant Nature Center in Brilliant to uh, put on 15 forest education <coughs> programs between September of this year and December of next year. Forest education programs are designed primarily for those landowners in Sheboygan County and Manitowoc County that own uh, 10 acres of, of wooded land or more. So in Sheboygan County, that's about 2,000 residents that would fit into that category. Mm -hmm. So these 15 programs are to help them manage their 15 acre, or their 10 acres or more of land um, because Wisconsin's forests really are primarily owned by private individuals. And lastly, in the cooperative program section of my pro presentation, I wanted to tell you about sustainable development. We're also working with some other agencies, such as Miller Engineers, and they just recently put on a great program down at Blue Harbor on sustainable develop development, which is living green, basically. <laughs> and we're doing more programs in that realm for, throughout the next year. I have some brochures that I'm going to pass out to the, the council members. And first one, since some of you might not be that familiar with Maywood, is an experienced Maywood brochure. Dave, your five is up. Do you need the extra minute? About another 30 seconds. Okay. Um, the second one is our summer camp, day camp brochure. We have summer day camps going on all summer long for kids ages seven up through early teens. And those are one week day camp sessions that are really very exciting. Our naturalist Rebecca Westfall is doing a great job in putting together some exciting things. And the other brochure that I have is this one called the Guide to Nature Centers of Northeastern Wisconsin, which, li which lists all of the, the nature centers in the northern eastern part of the state, which is Maywood, is one of those uh, great nature centers that we have. We also have a bicycling trail that apparently is going in in Sheboygan County, a $25 million project, and we are part of that in a way that we're putting on bicycling events throughout the year. We've got a five-month bicycle training program that, that's taken off last year and it's going to be going on this year, along with the Maywood 100, which is a park-to-park -to -park tour and, of course, our biggest fundraiser, which is the Maywood Earth Ride in September, which brings in people from all over the United States, including states such as California, Arizona, Florida, uh, all of the Midwestern states, and 90 communities in Wisconsin. Thank exactly you very much. Exactly one minute. Thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, next on the list is Carl Table. <clears throat> Carl, can I have your home address, please? Gladly, Sue. Uh, 2402 North 25th. North 25th. And you will have five minutes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor Perez, uh, Clerk Richards, Attorney McLean, members of the council, audience here live in City Hall, <coughs> and our many friends on Channel 8. Tonight I come to ask all of you, the elected representatives of our city, uh, to please keep the position of city clerk elected. As an American citizen, I like elections, I follow elections, and I have participated in elections. For six years, I had the honor to serve the people of Sheboygan with several of you people. And I'd like to particularly point out Don Van Akron. Don, a special thank you. You were a gentleman legislator. The community has high respect for you and the civility that you brought to this council. During my three terms as alderman, I was concerned about when there was a vacancy on the city council that we had the authority to appoint. I always felt that should be an elected position or elected to the council. And so I'm very happy to report this evening that thanks to Representative Ben Akron, and Senator Lipem and Governor Doyle, that as of the other day, Wisconsin has a new Act 248, that now if there is a vacancy on the city council, you will be able to have an election. And that'll give the people to go who want to run, out, to go into the neighborhoods and solicit the votes from their fellow citizens. Regarding this issue now about the city clerk, America is built on people voting, whether it be in our townships, our villages, our cities, our counties, and our states. Let's not lose this. The gentleman who asks for the armory on Friday afternoon, he and many others are going to Iraq. 
Why are they going there? Because as a nation, we have said we want the Iraq people to have elections. Not appointments, not dictatorships, but elections. Recently, our city went through our 06 elections. Many of you were involved, and I want to thank those of you who were involved for your involvement as a candidate. To those of you who are continuing to serve and those of you who have served, I wish you only the best. I ask you this evening, please keep the position as city clerk elected. Don't take my vote away. The county clerk is elected. The clerk on the state level, which would be the Secretary of State, is elected. And just to give a few examples how important one vote is, I'd like to just, just quote from the history of one vote. By one vote in 1776 gave America the English language instead of German. By one vote in the Electoral College, Tom Jefferson won the presidency over Aaron Burr. By one vote, Texas was brought into the Union. By one vote, President Johnson was uh, saved from impeachment. And we could go on in the history of our wonderful country, our wonderful state, and our wonderful city. I ask you. Please keep the position elected. Uh, Dimple Adams, a, a fellow citizen, wanted to speak this evening, was not able to. Uh, she concurs with me to please keep it an elected position. And as I gave tribute to Don as one of my uh, former colleagues, I'd like to also thank the gentleman who succeeded me and also served so faithfully these, these last years, and that is to Bill Staffan. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you for giving me the chance to speak. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Last on the list is Jean McGovern. And which one of you is Jean? OK, and I need your address, Jean. 1004 Bell Avenue. 1004. Bell Avenue, and you will have five minutes. We are members of the Sheboygan County 4-H program. Our club is the Sheboygan Busy Beavers. I'm Amanda McGovern, and this is my mom, Jean McGovern. We are excited to be here this evening and to be part partnering with the City of Sheboygan, AAA, and Wolf Cycle in bringing a community bike rodeo to Evergreen Park on Saturday, April 29th from 10.30 to 1.30. The bike rodeo will include bike safety checks, licenses, licensing, helmet fitting, rules of the road, a bicycle safety course, and other activities for the whole family. My mom and I are both on the planning committee for this event and are looking forward to a great day. The community bike rodeo is just one way that Sheboygan County 4-H programs contribute to the city of Sheboygan. For example, our club has adopted a street, has done multiple non-perishable food drives each year, we've adopted a local nursing home, we volunteer yearly for the March of Dimes, and have volunteered our services to animal shelters and rescue leagues all over the city. <coughs> all this while providing our community youth with the opportunity to explore their own backyards as well as the world at large through projects at home, national field trips, and international exchange programs. We enjoy giving back to the community and are thankful for this opportunity with the first annual Community Bike Rodeo. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the City of Sheboygan for its willingness to partner with the Sheboygan County 4-H and allow us the use of Evergreen Park and the services of a city police officer for the day. We thank you for supporting our efforts and look forward to a great day of learning and fun for the whole community. You are all invited to join us. Admission is a non-perishable food item, again, to help support our local food pantries. <coughs> we will also be raffling off a mountain bike and a couple of gift certificates from Wolf Cycle, all the proceeds to be donated again to area food pantries. Thank you again for your support and your generosity. It's generosity like this that makes the city of Sheboygan a truly great place to live for youth and their families. Thank you. <clears throat> A 
I'd like to thank all the five citizens who addressed the council tonight. We appreciate your thoughts and concerns, and we encourage them further. The next item on the agenda, we have a series of four public hearings, and I'll read all of them out. And if there's any citizen that would like to address the council with respect to any one hearing, please make that notation as one, two, three, or four, and we will recognize you. First hearing will be for the vacation and discontinuance of the unpaved alley between Georgia Avenue and Clara Avenue and east of South 17, 7th Street. Second hearing will be for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in Illinois Avenue from South 13th Street to South 14th Street. The third hearing will be for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacements in South 13th Street from Maryland Avenue to Illinois Avenue. The fourth hearing for the proposed <coughs> assessments for water lateral replacements in North 8th Street from Ontario Avenue to Michigan Avenue. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council with respect to these four hearings? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council? President Grau. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that all four hearings be closed. Second. Motion to second to close hearings. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor, favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Hearings are closed. President Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, before we get into the consent agenda, I'd like to pull forward document 2441 from other matters. And with that, yes, uh, please. Thank you. I would move that um, the RO be accepted and filed and the general ordinance be passed. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor, this um, document refers to um, the, several of the hearings that we just had. And um, uh, because there are several people from out of the city um, that are involved in this, uh, we'd like to give them the good news to send them on their way back to um, where they came from. Thank you, President Grove. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. <clears throat> excuse me, Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel? 15 ayes. Motion carries. Consent agenda 26-1 through 2620. President Draw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that for the items 26-1 through 2620, that all the ROs be accepted and filed, that all the RCs be accepted and adopted, and we pass the resolutions. There's a motion to second. Under discussion, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to ask that 26-2 be referred to the new Public Protection and Safety Committee. 26-2. Mm -hmm. New Public Protection? Yes. Will be referred. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Bauman, sir. I thank you, Your Honor. Discussion purposes only, I'd like to uh, just speak on item 26-18. 2618 for discussion. Please proceed. 2618 is referring to the 2006 concrete sidewalk construction project. The bids this year came in at a very good rate. So the money that was budgeted actually was higher than what we were given or than what the bids came in at. So we're actually going to be able to do more of the sidewalks than <coughs> anticipated in doing. So that's a good thing. Yes, it is, Alderman Bowman. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Any further discussion? There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Graf, Kittleson, Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Sagali, Stefan, Susha, Van Akron, Vanderweel, and Bauman. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Communications 26. 21 through 2622 to be referred. Report of officers 2623 
by the city attorney submit a summary of the city's liability claims for the 10-year period, 1996 to 2005. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO will be accepted and placed on file. There's a motion to accept and file. Second. And second. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2624 through 2631 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 2632 by Olam Susha authorizing the Plymouth National Guard B battery to use the battalion battery to use the Sheboygan Army without cost on April 21st, 2006 to have a send off ceremony for its 188, 180 soldiers who will be leaving for service in Iraq. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Okay. Is, is, there, is there any objection first? There is none. Please proceed. Thank you. I'd like to move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution 2632 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Groff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman and Deberg, 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2633 by Alderman Susha, temporar temporarily allowing parking on South 11th Street, west side only, from Maryland Avenue to Illinois Avenue from May 29th, 06 to <coughs> October 06 to accommodate vehicles displaced by construction. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move uh, to suspend just, the rules. Just ask for any objection to, for suspension? None, please proceed. Okay, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. And Eberg, Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carries. 2634 uh, by Alderman Van Akron and Susha confirming assessments for the proposed water lateral replacements in North 8th Street from Ontario Avenue to Michigan. Alderman Susha, would you like to take 2634, 35, and 36? Please do. I move that these three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion to second to put all three resolutions upon their passage Aye. under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2637 by Alderman Berg, Groff, and Van Akron, ratifying resolution number 3120506, accepting the agreement with local 5011 Union of Professional Employees and resolution number 3130506, accepting the agreement with the Professional Police Officers Supervisory Association. Vice President Byrd. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. With that, I'd also like to take uh, 2587. Uh, both of these documents relate yes. to uh, settlements. Okay, is there a motion? And I move that the resolution be put upon the passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put both resolutions, 2637 and 2587, upon their passage. Alderman Byrd, one is a res and one is an ord. Is that what you wanted? I stand corrected. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. And give me one second. Davis. Aye. <laughs> Graff. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. No. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2638 to be referred. 2639 by Alderman Graff amending the, the Vantage Care Retirement Health Savings Program to include all permanent, part time, and full time city employees. Vice President Byrd. Yeah. Aye. 
Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move to be put up on this passage. Ask for suspension. Is there, yes, please, uh, suspension. Is there any objection? Please proceed then. Uh, yes, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Are you taking just 39 or, or 40 with it? Uh, if possible, I would like to ask for suspension on 40 and 41 then. Is there any objection to uh, 40 and 41 you said? Correct. You want to put them all together? Correct. Okay. All three. All right. Any objection to suspension on 26, 39, 40, and 41? There would be a none. Your, your motion is to put, put them all upon their passage. Correct. And there was a second. second. Under discussion. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, being that these were scheduled on the agenda to be referred, I was just wondering if you could give us a quick synopsis of what this is all about, please. Vice President Burke. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this will conclude uh, the 2005 and 2006 salary negotiations. Uh, in other words, we have reached tentative agreements with the union subject to council approval. And I think it is perhaps most efficient if we can conclude this, this council year and then the new salary and grievance commission, when they're impaneled, can begin the negotiations for 2007. So given that we've previously acted upon uh, all the other salary matters, this is just to some degree a housekeeping matter. The, uh, if you would, the agreements are all very similar. We're settling at uh, two and a half percent. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Susha, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm just reading through these kind of quickly, and um, I believe number 40 and 41 are relevant to the actual uh, collective bargaining agreement, whereas number 39 seems to be a little bit different. It's related to participation into a retirement plan, a health savings program. So I'm wondering if we could have a separate vote on 39. No objection. Thank you. Okay. Are you, are you making a motion to ask for a separate vote? No, I would ask to make a motion for a separate vote. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? We will proceed with 40 and 41 then. Motion has been made and second has been discussed. Is there any further discussion on 40 and 41? There being none, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Sagali? Stefan? Aye. Susha? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. On 26, 30, and 9, then, we go back. Your motion still stands, Vice President Berg. Second. President uh, Krupp. Any discussion on 30, 26, 39? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. <clears throat> excuse me. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <coughs> 2642 by Alvin Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis. Davis authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman, Pre President Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask for suspension. Is there any objection to suspension? There is none. Please proceed. Then I would move that the um, that 2642 be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second. Put 2642 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, <laughs> Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. and Kittleson. <clears throat> Excuse me, 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of committees 7, 26, 40, 2643 through 2645 to be referred. Ordinance introduced 10, 26, 46 to be referred. Matters laid over, 2441 has been pulled forward, 2577, and RO number, RO number 6620506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from St. Nicholas Hospital requesting permission to sponsor the annual St. Nicholas Hospital Freedom Run on July 4th, 2006. President Graff. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and filed. Second. There's a motion second to file. Under discussion, Alderman Serta. It was from previously. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Light blue blank in here. Under discussion, Attorney McLean. Uh, just for clarification, are you, by accepting and filing this communication, are you also uh, approving the request? Approving, approving the request. All right, then. I would suggest <clears throat> be accept and adopt. The Excuse me, uh, Attorney McLean, there is a resolution following up in a few minutes that will be addressing that, an actual resolution granting permission. So then this one should just be filed, okay. and then the other yes. one comes forward. Okay. Yes. Are we okay with that? Just to, just to explain, 2577 will be filed. There's a, a corresponding resolution coming forward to approve. Okay? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2579 and RO, RO number 6630506 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Asher Heimerman, Heimerman of Resources of Sheboygan Club thanking Alderman Berg, Alderperson Berg for his hard work on council and thanking the city clerk and the mayor for providing information about the city for his club. President Groth. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that RO be accepted and placed on file also. There's a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 2585 RO number 6640506 oh, by the Municipal Board of Canvassers stating that they have determined the following persons were duly elected to the offices specified. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that RO, that RO also be accepted and filed. Okay. Motion to accept and file and second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. 2545, resolution number 3140506 oh, by Alderman Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Can I take Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I take the next two also? Please do. I move that all three resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put 25, 45, 46, and 47 upon their passage under discussion. There being <clears throat> Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make some comments in regards to 25-47. And what this document is about is it's um, implementing a wireless network. Um, I believe it's a wireless net mesh network. Um, it was, it was uh, introduced to us in the Finance Committee. And what happened is that there was an opportunity with building a new firehouse that they were going to go with this wireless mesh system. And the company that developed it uh, gave a, a proposal to the city that we could implement a pilot study and connect some of our other buildings through this wireless system. And even though I'm going to um, vote in favor of this, um, I think it's worthy of checking into this wireless mesh. I just wanted to kind of bring everybody uh, up to speed in regards to <coughs> planning for next year's budget. Because when you look at where did the extra $15,000 come from to pay for this, you find that the wastewater plant has an extra $5,000 under professional, service, professional services. The wastewater fund sanitary sewer maintenance has an extra $2,500 in contractual services. The stormwater fund has an extra $2,500 in professional services. Um, the police department has an extra $1,000 in the uh, PC repayment fund, and the information system fund has an extra $3,645 under contractual services. I question all of those because to me, when you are approving the budget and you approve items such as professional and, or contractual services, I guess I think of um, services like outside legal counsel, or if one of our buildings develops a, a problem with mice that we would you know, contract with an exterminator. And I don't think that this is necessarily what this money should be spent on, um, because this was something that we didn't know was coming. And I guess in the future, we have a contingency fund. I would think that these items should come out under the contingency fund. And I guess I would like to give a heads up to each of the department heads that when it comes time to budgeting, they should be prepared because I will be asking for an itemization of everything that is in their professional service and also under their contractual services. And I hope that they're prepared to tell us what exactly each of those dollars is going to be used for. 
Thank you. Thank you, Alma Susha. Any more discussion? There being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> 2578, resolution number 3170506 by Alderman Van Akron and Susha granting St. Nicholas Hospital permission to hold a freedom run and walk on the streets of, and sidewalks of the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion the second, put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2584, an RC number 512506 by the Marina and Harbor Committee filing various documents. Vice President Berg. Yes, so thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, reporter committee be accepted and filed. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 2569, charter. Ordinance number 10506 by Alderman Berg, Serta, and Van Akron providing for the appointment of the city clerk in lieu of the current method of election by the voters to such office. Old Vice President Berg. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would also like to uh, uh, take 2570 and 2587 with the condition that if the charter ordinance fails to pass, that 2570 and 2587 be, then be filed. Oh, very, very well. Yeah. Although we, we've already acted on 2587. Already been acted on. We've already acted on 2587. Okay. Correction, uh, 2570, excuse two. me. Two, yes. right. 2572. Right. Just two documents. Just I two documents. Yeah, 2569. Okay. Yeah, I 25. had double circles. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Who seconded that? Under discussion, we'll let a. Who seconded that? I didn't. Who seconded that? Second. We got a second. Okay. We were, before I get to you, Alderman Berg, Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Berg, are you suggesting taking a vote on those separately or together? And the, the reason I ask. Together with the condition that if 2969, the charter ordinance is defeated, then de facto the general ordinance is accepted and filed. Uh, because they're, they're companion documents. Right. I guess I would suggest do them separately. The charter ordinance requires a two thirds vote, right. and the other requires a majority vote. So mm -hmm. uh, I think you should probably do the charter ordinance first. Why don't we do that? Let's keep uh, it clean. Okay, Heldenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Your, your, renew your motion, please, to okay, 2569. The charter ordinance uh, be placed upon its passage. And there's a second. 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 Okay, we've got a motion on 2569 relating to the city ordinance, possibly uh, or possibly changing the city clerk's position from an elected to an appointed. And we had Alderman Denberg <coughs> to go first. Okay. No, no, Denberg. He was, he was up. I'll, I'll get you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> when we first had this in salaries and grievance, I thought it was a good idea until, <clears throat> until I started getting phone calls and everything from people about asking why, why the Common Council always wants to take away their right to vote, which is actually true because so many other city uh, positions we have used to be voted on by the uh, uh, citizens but the councils kept on taking them away, taking them away. <coughs> so I had a lot of calls this week, believe it or not, and uh, they're saying, please leave the city clerk as an elected position. Don't take these uh, voters' uh, ch choice away. Don't, don't put this power in the hands of one or two people. Let's keep, it, let's keep the clerk's position uh, voted on by the city uh, citizens that they can elect who they like. So please vote no on this, please. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Next we have Alderman Redke. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Redke. 
Vice President Bergwin is, but you didn't have your light on. That's why I'm confused. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you again, Your Be Honor. Right with you, sir. Uh, thank you. This did come out of a discussion of salary and grievances. We, uh, when we were doing comparables, we looked uh, at a number of, at the data set had about 20 clerks in them. Of the clerks uh, positions, only about four or five were elected. Uh, we had previously brought through council a way to look at every open position. Uh, the uh, discussion really focused around uh, should this continue to be elected or should it be an appointed position. I guess for me personally the outcome is the discussion. That the discussion is more important even than the decision. We talked earlier about how the right to vote was sacred. And I think in that regard, this is one of those uh, heart versus head discussions. Everybody in their heart values the, the right to vote. It seems to be sacred in our community. And I would say <coughs> that the right to vote uh, is, a, is sacred. But even more sacred than that is our right to debate that right. And it is with that I think we bring this forward uh, primarily for discussion. A couple of factors I think that uh, present and I think I will speak not to the heart side, because if you believe voting is important, I don't think there's a reasonable argument that will sway anybody's mind. However, there are some factors that I think impact on this particular position. Uh, first off, uh, one of the issues relates to the very highly technical and specialized role that has evolved in many of our government positions. Uh, in the 1800s, the clerk was typically the administrator of the township. Right now, uh, the competency required re in this area means a unique degree of knowledge in matters of record retention, election law, licensing. Virtually all of the bitty business of the city runs through the clerk's office. Uh, in terms of elected positions, often with elected positions comes the ability to set broad ranging policy. Uh, much, if not all, of the duties of the clerk are constricted and prescribed either very narrowly by the statutes or by the ordinances. Uh, because of that purpose, this is such a knowledge intensive position, there are not corollary positions that you can look at for comparables in the, in the private sector. Uh, if appointed, the clerk's positions are often filled from within. Uh, and within that regard, sometimes the most competent individual is not an individual who feels like going door to door for the election process. Uh, the best candidate uh, may be a good campaigner, but not necessarily a good clerk, and vice versa. Uh, Appointments will follow a competitive application process uh, with a, the Civil Service Commission uh, determining the qualifications. One of the standards that, there, that, that exists is certified municipal clerk. Uh, that is someone who has met the educational requirements for that job and has achieved, if you would, that level of competence that is awarded by their peers. Uh, <coughs> I will also, I guess, speak to the, the current clerk. And how could we not but think of the, the, the city clerk's position without uh, thinking of Sue Richards? And I think many of the calls I've had would be a concern that, <coughs> gee, in some ways, this would uh, cause Clerk Richards to lose her job. On the contrary, uh, by this ordinance, she would be the first individual appointment. And I would also, given that, because we often look at individuals versus positions, I'm going to venture into very dangerous and uncharted uh, water. As a matter of fact, it probably is even going to be bordering on being politically incorrect, but our staff is aging. Clerk Richards is aging. Uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, Linda is aging. You know, uh, there comes to be a time Isn't when we order? will no longer, at some point in time, have uh, the services of our current staff. Uh, uh, and <laughs> if for whatever reason there is not a legitimate internal successor, I can see a good deal of difficulty in terms of supporting, if you would, the activities of that very vital and important office. So for me, appointment does offer a sense of assurance that the most technically competent individual is chosen to serve, not just the best campaigner. Thank you. Thank you, Alan Berg. <laughs> I'll park my wheelchair next time I come in. <laughs> <laughs>
Alderman Ratney, you're next, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Earlier this evening, we had a gentleman here speaking in the public forum about the people that are going to Iraq to defend the people and give them the right to vote and defend their brothers and sisters that are fighting in Iraq. People are dying for the right to vote, and we want to take that away from the people of this community. The people of this community, to be technically correct, are not incompetent to make the right choices at the voting polls. For example, the county coroner. You don't have to be a doctor. You can be a layman just like you and I, and you can go out and declare people dead. Register to each sheriff, county clerk, the list goes on. You don't have to have the qualifications, and the voters are not dumb by any means. The voters can make up their mind as to the right person for the right job. If we take this away from these people, then why don't we all just take the uh, positions of elected all the persons in the mayor away, and we'll go down to Ed Surik's office every two years and apply for the job? Because that's the direction we're heading here. To take away the right to vote is taking away the voice of the people. I ran an open, responsive government. This is an open, responsive government. We start taking the right of the people to vote away. People know how to make the right choice. If they don't, in a couple of years, they'll fix that choice. But for right now, I don't doubt the voters because as, as far as I know, they still run this city through us. And to take away their right is the wrong thing to do. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. I too am going to uh, uh, more or less speak on election versus appointment. I'm going to mirror the comments, of course, of Dan Berg and Alderman Radke, so I won't uh, uh, go ahead and state what they did already. But I had calls actually from Thursday on. The only day that my phone didn't ring was yesterday. Today again it started. All concerning voting. They would prefer to have the vote there for themselves to use and not to have an appointment made for this position. Poll workers called me, other people called me, everyone called me, and there was not one call in favor of having this in favor of uh, appointment. So they said by doing this, we're denying their right to vote, and they would really like to see us vote in favor of keeping it as elected. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. Alderman Serta. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I would just like to state for the record that Madam City Clerk um, Susan Richard had no influence in generating this ordinance, and I would like to thank her for her patience in allowing us to explore this topic, and it speaks of her integrity. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, I just needed to uh, concur with uh, Alderman Bauman. I received many, many calls on this um, subject and I was really happy that the uh, the people called because I like to hear from them and they too um, everyone loves Sue Richards that's not the, the not, that is not in question at all um, but they do wish uh, to have the uh, uh, city clerk's position remain uh, an elected position and that's what I uh, heard from all the people thank you thank you Alderman Kittleson Alderman Montemayo thank you your honor I think having um, our city clerk elected is, is fine. I would like to perhaps refer this to the next committee of the whole so we can explore maybe basic criteria for the city clerk's position and still keep it elected. Is it, that was a motion? Yes. And a second under discussion. Be, before I just wanted to make a, a comment. This is. Uh, this is the most peculiar thing that keeps popping up. When I was an alderman, this thing came up again, and I remember uh, Representative Van Akron, then Alderman Van Akron, and I was an alderman, we stood up and probably fought this thing pretty hard, and it didn't pass then for the exact same reasons that you are stating today and the exact same reasons and concerns that the citizens of Sheboygan have. For some unknown reason, this thing keeps popping up every three or four years, it just pops up. <coughs> What strikes me as, as unique and, and, and powerful is that the citizens at different times throughout time continue to make the same point. Don't take a right to select that person away. Simple as that. They keep saying it over and over and over again. Alderman Susha, under discussion. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, today somebody asked me the question about if I thought uh, this issue should go to referendum, and I had not thought about that, and I would like more time to think about that, and I think that if we have a meeting of the committee of the whole where we can look at all aspects, I think this needs a lot more discussion before a decision is made one way or the other. 
Um, I know that many of the phone calls that I received, the concern was more about the phrase appointment. And the concern I had from one individual is they were afraid that the mayor was going to appoint his sister or someone like that. And, and that's not how the system works. And I think that if we go to the committee the whole with this, um, all of the aldermen can have more information so we can make an informed, intelligent decision on, on what to do. Should we have a referendum? Should we go ahead and just vote on this? Or should we just drop it and leave it the way it is? So I would support going to um, committee the whole with this issue. Thank you. I certainly hope you don't start a rumor by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I have no sisters in Sheboygan, <laughs> nor in Wisconsin. Alderman, Vice President Burke. Uh, thank you. I'm not going to vote against the committee of the whole because I think this is a relatively simple issue we can dispose of this evening. Uh, clearly, the issue is one of discussion only. Uh, I, I think the, <clears throat> the situation we have currently works, but when we stop evaluating governance and how we govern, uh, I think we do ourselves a disservice. So this was done much more so for a discussion purpose to, I, to look at alternatives, because I think a part of our job is to look at those alternatives. Uh, some of the issues that present the requirements for city clerk by statute, I believe, are relatively simple. We do not have the ability to craft a job description. Uh, that uh, I believe uh, that the requirements are is that you are 18 years of, of age, you are not a felon, and uh, you are a registered voter, or, will be, uh, or you will move to the area that you are running in. Those are the basic requirements, as I understand them, for, for political office. So I don't think there would be much to debate on that topic, and I would just ask that we dispose of this tonight so we can uh, move on with new business uh, with the new uh, year. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I concur with Alderperson Berg. Um, to wrap things up this evening, um, I think this will, correct me if I'm wrong, but you could also bring in another or, um, ordinance with the next council. And that way it's going to allow it to go through due process. It's going to give the new council the advantage of having it go to possibly salary and grievance, be referred to the Committee of the Whole, and just to assess their citizen base to see if that's warranted. Alderman Vanderweel. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Like many of the aldermen here tonight, I've received many phone calls asking to keep this position elected. And I agree with Alderman Serta that, that this can come in a different form, uh, further investigated so that we can look at it in a committee or a committee of the whole, that we can take care of this document tonight and look at it uh, in a new council. Thank you, Alderman. And I will. And I think it's important before we take, we're going to. I think we're going to, uh, so we're, before we take the vote, it's important to, to remind everyone again, particularly the public, who's, who's being very, very mindful of this issue, is Madam City Clerk Sue Richards had nothing to do with instigating. And Alma Serta, thank you for pointing that out. It's not her doing. She's not to blame for trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. She had nothing to do with that. It was something that came under discussion, keeps popping back up. And that's just the way it is. And I don't agree. You're not getting older. I am. OK? We will call the roll. It is, uh, do you want the roll call or just a voice vote? Roll call. Sorry, roll call. Please call the roll. Well, we've got first the motion is to refer to the committee of the whole of the new council. Council, yes. And I vote would be to refer. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? Uh, no. <laughs> Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Um, two ayes and 13 noes. Motion fails. Now we will take uh, the Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Being that we're going to vote on the document as it is, I would like to make a few amendments, just in case it would pass. Um, I would make a motion to amend it. Everywhere it says uh, job grade 12, I'd like to change that to job grade 11. Where is it? Is it germane to you? I think it is, but I'm not sure how it says job grade 11 or 12. But where are you, could you point no, out where? That's in the position description, I believe. 
the position description? That is Vice President Burke. Yes, that isn't part of the ordinance. I believe that's the companion. That's in 2570. That's the, the next document. one we're taking up. It's a different okay, document. Okay, then I'll take it in the next so one. Thank you. A, the motion would be out of order. Okay, we have 2569, and I believe we had a motion and a second. Correct? And under the discussion on, on that issue, Alderman Serta? Oh, no. No? Pass? Mm -hmm. Alderman Radke? Thank you, Your Honor. Is this going to ask uh, what the majority of vote? Is this simple majority? Is this two thirds, three quarters to change the charter ordinance? Two thirds. Thank you. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. I'm sorry. Alderman Sigali? Thank you, Mr. Weir. If we could just please have clarification on what we're what you're voting, voting on. Please. You're voting on the final to, to pass the charter ordinance to make this an appointed position, and I vote would be to pass the charter. <clears throat> Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? No. Kittleson? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. And Radke? No. One eye, 14 no's. Motion fails. 2570. General Ordinance Number 1040506 by Alderman Berg, Serta, and Van Akron amend the code so as to add and delete a position from the City Clerk's Table of Organization. Vice President Berg. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I will move to file that. Second. Second. Motion and second to file. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Sagal, I'm sorry, Stefan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. and Sigali. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2587 has been dealt with. Other matters authorized by law. 2647 will be referred to public works of the new council. 2648, an RO by the Sheboygan Transit Commission recommending enter into a contract for the Sheboygan Transit Tire Services. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and placed on file and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and also, if I may, for 2649, that that RO be accepted and, and placed on file. Okay, there's a motion and a second. And for 2650, if I may also take that RO. You're in a row. And has that RO be accepted and placed on file and that general ordinance be put upon its passage? Second. There's a motion and a second. We're taking 26, 48, 49, and 50. Under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Stefan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would request a separate vote on 2650, please. Okay. Alderman uh, Graf, would you like to withdraw that motion, that party motion 2650? Sure. So we can take separate. Vice President Burke, is that okay with you too? Okay, so the motion stands. 2650 has been withdrawn, Alderman Stephan. The motion as it is now is 2648 to accept and file and pass the attached resolution, and 2649 to accept and file. Under discussion on that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We need a, we need a roll, roll, call. roll call, yes. Take that back. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. And Stefan? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2650, an RO by the Sheboygan Transit Commission recommending amending section 2-558 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the composition of the Transit Commission so as to authorize the mayor and department heads members to designate another member of that department to attend a meeting or meetings in their absence. Right. President Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and placed on file and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, just a little background for people. Uh, the makeup of the Transit Commission is some citizen appointees. Uh, as we can see, the, the Chief of Police, 
the Department of Development, the mayor, and then some older persons who are there by virtue of the fact they're a chair of a standing committee. It has always been the process that the chair of the standing committee, if he can't make the meeting, can designate the vice chair or somebody else from that committee to vote with his proxy. Uh, I came a couple months ago and I guess I voted because Alderman person Groff couldn't be there and that kind of brought up this issue, well, if, how come he can vote if he's not on the committee? And I have really have no issue with allowing the chief of police and the director of city development to al allow somebody in the department if they, if they can't make the meeting to carry their vote. My problem is the mayor, I feel that if he can't be there, we should have another older person there because he doesn't represent a department. He represents, in my mind, an, an elected position. And I'd just like to offer an amendment that would allow him to appoint an older person to take his spot rather than someone from his department. So my amendment would be to, under D, just delete the first two words, the mayor. And then at the end when it says, uh, full power to act in his or her stead, add the mayor shall be allowed to appoint an older person with, with similar rights. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Second. To amend. Under discussion on that part? And I have absolutely no problem with it. Okay, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we're back to the motion, uh, motion to pass as, uh, to accept and file and pass the ordinance as amended. I would make that motion, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you, President. Second. And a second. Any discussion on that? Madam City Clerk, just call the roll. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Where was this going? I'll just take my turn. Okay. Attorney McLean, other matters? Thank you, Your Honor. 2651 is a communication from Dwayne Desjardins stating various concerns with the handling of its unemployment claim against the city and submitting the decisions from the unemployment tribunal and the administrative law judge. And that would be referred to risk management of the new council? 2652 is a communication from Tom Clark, 612 South 22nd Street, regarding the concerns of the problem of noise created at the city municipal yard that sometimes start at 6.15 a.m. And that will be referred to public works of the new council, Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, may I address the four retiring people, please? Please do so. And thank you. My comments will be extremely short this evening. Generally, last night of council, I used to come up with some real comical remarks, etc. I'm going to be serious tonight something different. The uh, first uh, comments, of course, would be to Dan Berg, Alderman Berg. You've often been outspoken on council, but at times, and I tell you, you really stood up for your constituency. We're going to miss your colorful comments. Those are great, and very much good luck in the future. Like I said, they're going to be short. Marge, Alderman Marge Sigali, you too were not afraid to speak up on any subjects. Even though you were defeated in the election, you did serve your, your people well. You were a very good representative of your area, and we also will miss you. Alderman Bill, Bill Stephan. Actually, I only got to know you mostly through the union, which I'm a member of. You were our financial secretary. You did a good job there. Council member, a wonderful job. You have a great financial background, which also helped you on council when you were members of finance committee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, uh, you've always had the city in its best interests in your heart. And thank you for serving on council. Lastly, for Don Van Akron, Alderman Don. You know, it's really going to be different up here not having a Van Akron being called on. I mean, how many years have I been up here? And it's been a few. There was either a Terry or a Don or a Terry and a Don Van Akron. So there was always someone 
answering to that Ben Akron name. Your years up here will always be remembered. You've had to work with several mayors. How many? Three. Three? Well, I tell you, each mayor, I think, was impressed with your knowledge and your actions. Yes, you took time to learn, as we all did. But man, you were really a wonderful person to work with. I'll tell you what. Also, good luck in your retirement. And we will definitely miss you up here. That's all. Thank you. Alderman Sarda. Thank you, Your Honor. I just have a few words to say as well. Um, to Donnie, I would just like to say it's been said that you've been a man of very few words, but you've led with your heart, and I've witnessed that, and I thank you. Bill Stephan, I must say it's been, it's been something to work with you. I've appreciated your common sense, your insight, your discussion. It's helped me tremendously in making my decisions, and I thank you for that. Dan, I've watched you take a stand, and it takes a lot of courage, and I must say there's something, there's, there's an advantage to having your age and your wisdom, and I've, I've gained a tremendous amount of knowledge from seeing that. And lastly, to Marge, it's been a privilege working beside you. You've been passionate, and I know we've spoken many times, and I know you served your district very well, and it's not only been a privilege to work with you, but... <laughs> Um, I've also gained a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sarda. Alderman Sigali. I guess it's my turn. I need to thank the people of my district for allowing me to serve them for the past two years. And if I could make some comments to the department heads, I sure would like to, please. Please do. I guess I'd like to thank Tom, and I'd like to thank Mr. Holton. <laughs> I'd like to thank... Um, Chief Lutowski, I would like to thank all the department heads that I work with, and last but not least, our Chief of Police, Dave Kirk. I believed in your department yesterday, I believe in your department today, and I'll believe in your department from this day forward. You have good men and women. I want to thank the, your spouses. Or without them, you didn't go home. You could go home and know that the people that you went home to loved you and supported you. You have been a fine police chief, as well as we have a fine uh, fire chief. And Tom Holton, you've been terrific. You still need your men. Uh, you need your men, chief. Jay, you're doing pretty good in that field, uh, but you probably could use more. <laughs> Um, I, I just want to thank the people that have come to the council meetings too and have heard all of our um, what we had to say and, and acknowledged us and treated us with respect. I think, that, I think that's really all very important. Igor, I love hearing you on the radio and his best half over there with him. Uh, this has just been a terrific thing. Dan, I, I really, I don't know what to say. And of course, the city of Sheboygan has to be very grateful there is no Thelma and Louise anymore <laughs> because that's what Bonnie and I were known at. I, I guess I just want to say thank you to everyone. I want to say thank you to you, Sue. And I'm glad it's still going to be elected because you were the person the older people could go for with all the guidance and the leadership that you had. And I am eternally grateful for all the help that you have given us. Steve. I've talked to you before, but I truly mean it. I will miss everybody here. You just have been good people and good advisors, and I thank you for all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Segali. Alderman Gruff, President Gruff. Thank you, Your Honor. As, as president of the 2005-2006 Common Council, I'd just like to thank all the older persons for save, serving up here, for Dan Berg, for um, Bill Steffen, for Mark <coughs> Segali, and for um, Donnie Van Akron, special thanks to them for, for serving the years that they put in, and uh, we will truly miss them all. Uh, for those that are um, continuing on uh, and will be joining with the newly elected older persons tomorrow night, I wish them a, a year of successes, a year to move forward, a year to make uh, Sheboygan a better place to um, live, work, and, and play. And I'm sure if we work together and cooperate and listen to each other, um, we'll be able to do that. 
Make a motion. Uh, Don't. Don't. Yes. Alderman mm -hmm. Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to thank uh, the head of the department. I would like to thank Sue and her staff for the flowers and my relations for all the loons. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know why I can't talk, because my son does all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one thing he forgot have to tell you, <coughs> that now he asks me, why did I vote that way? <laughs> and I'd like to thank all the people in the second district for the 10 years, the 19 years they gave me, and I'm proud to serve them for that many years. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Well, President Graff? Your Honor, I'd move to adjourn, sign, and die. Second. Or second. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Stand adjourned.